Hola, ¿cómo estáis? No sé si me conocéis. Estoy... How are you? I don't know if you know me. <laughs> Here I am again. Here we are with Francisco. We're going to take a seat and um, we're going to make the most of these minutes because Jorge is going to tell me off um, otherwise. We're here with Francisco, who is one of the great ones. This is the NBA of the greatest of the greatest, uh, under my really subjective point of view, okay? But um, this is la creme de la creme, the best of the best. As a journalist, um, I would like to talk about what Francisco means to me. As you know, I'm also a college professor and I'm part of the academia, so Francisco surprised me from the beginning for, because he is a researcher, holds a chair on artificial intelligence, a teacher. Later on, he's going to talk about how he defines himself in the kind of work that he uh, performs. But he's a bit of an outsider. Academia is just like Vegas. What happens in the academia stays in the academia. And that knowledge stays there and doesn't outstrip the boundaries of the universities. But Francisco outstrips that, those boundaries with fantastic projects that change the reality, just uh, the social reality, which is something we saw with Eves, which is something that is unheard of in the academia. So who is Francisco from your objective point of view? Because you obviously know him better. Good morning to all the audience. Thank you very much for being here. Francisco, Francisco is a researcher, a scientist, engineer, computing engineer, and a proud teacher. And I work at the University of Malaga. Um, I teach there doing technological transfer and um, tasting a bit of everything. Uh, the comparison you did was really good. Uh, it, it, maybe it's just like Vegas, but it's, an, it's a fantastic platform so that, well, that allows people to do certain things. So that's the perfect ecosystem in order to have a freedom of research uh, and flexibility. If you want to do that, you can do that. Uh, yes, but sometimes that knowledge stays there and you are capable of bringing that knowledge outside. That's what I meant. Um, if you like, we have been talking about artificial intelligence and you have uh, a lot of know-how on the field. I would like to know the following. When did you first uh, started gaining interest on AI? Well, very easy. I was interested in IT, and when I started preparing payroll software, when was that? Well, by the end of the 80s. By the end of the 80s, yes, when we created those um, software in COBOL language, which is uh, still ongoing, curiously enough. And you came to realize that the computer tells you what you tell him to do. So it lost its magic. And I was like, no, we need to do something that goes beyond. So artificial intelligence seemed to be the answer. but. Not really, because um, classical artificial intelligence uh, means that the computer does uh, what you tell him to do. So I was not excited, so I went to biology in order to emulate complex processes within the computer so that there the computer could surprise me and do things that I did not expect. And which were the pros and the cons uh, or not so good things of the um, artificial intelligence. Well, in principle, all of them were positive because it's a technology that is at our service. The negative thing is the usage that you make, obviously, yes, the usage that you do of the artificial intelligence, yes. So in order to wrap up everything that has to do with artificial intelligence, because I believe that um, what's interesting um, is uh, the projects that you're doing on the street. I would like to ask you, which is the future of the artificial intelligence from your academic standpoint? Um, can it promise many things? Well, we, we need to mm, lose, lose the, the, you know, the uh, the mystery of that. Um, um, we're talking about sensors, and sometimes um, if you label that as AI sensor, it sells more. Let's not kid ourselves. It's just a sensor. And also software can be simpler or more complex. So artificial intelligence can be bio-inspired or um, entail some massive computing uh, capacity. But at the end of the day, it's an extension.
important. So it's not a breakthrough where we're moving on to something else, but it's um, rather same old, same old. And regarding the question, I coincide with uh, Maria's comments, and we should not be concerned by that. We should be concerned by the planet, which is something that we are going to damage. We're not going to see it, see it because we're going to extinguish before. Yes. So we, if we continue like this, uh, neither artificial intelligence nor anything. Yes, precisely. Yeah, everything is going to be burnt. Yes. So let's use not artificial intelligence, but all the resources available for us in order to fix what um, we messed up with. Yes, precisely. We messed it up. And you're talking about software. And all of this relies on programming. And there is a a fantastic project that you have in your team, which I very much like, which is the Toolbox Academy. Please look it up. And it's a project that we're going to talk about right now. Programming, at the end of the day, is a language that in order for us to communicate with the machines. How important is the fact that we become acquainted with that language or for my mom to know that language or for my children to know that language? Why do you think it's important? Well, think for once um, how a world would be without books, Oscar. It's not a rhetorical question. Think about a world without books. I am already depressed. Of course, I cannot imagine that, okay? Um, Without all the um, literature that has allowed us to uh, live adventures, acquire knowledge, how many hours have we enjoyed reading a book just because someone thought that we needed to, um, well, read. It was important. It was not necessary, but it was important because society has been illiterate for many years. And we moved from 20 to 80 percent literacy rate in 100 years. And this is the same thing. When I was 16, I was already enjoying programming. And I have never stopped enjoying myself when doing that. And if we do not teach someone to program and to talk to that fantastic machine, which are computers, they're not going to be able to enjoy that. So Toolbox Academy, which is about that, um, when do you conceive the idea? Or where? Was it in in the Caribbean Sea and a beach? Were you here? No, I was on my own. I came up with that when I was, when I failed at trying to teach programming to my children. And I realized um, that something was failing because I have experience and they are really skilled. So what was failing? Computers, because computers are more complex right now regarding what I had at the beginning, these Spectrum, Commodore, exactly, which were only useful for programming. There was no internet connection that would um, distract your attention with the social networks or massive uh, video games. Yes, you needed to introduce the cassette. Yes, precisely, and it took a while. Or you could program that, or you could buy a magazine and copy the program. So there was a, a, an ecosystem that was specifically designed to um, write the programs. But right now we have computers that uh, serve many different purposes except for um, programming or coding. And they have turned very complex. The programming language has become really complex. I had a basic, which from the IT computing standpoint is something regrettable. Um, well, my, my first book was called a Basic Basico. <laughs> that, that's what I was uh, starting with. Yes. So you should think that everything that, to me, had to do with um, bringing down all the initial hurdles means that right now it's the opposite. Uh, There are a lot of uh, starting barriers. And you need to simplify the technology and adapt it to the children rather than expect for them to adapt to the technologies. So Toolbox is an attempt so that a very complex uh, computer with a complex development uh, environment and language becomes a really simple tool so that with exquisitely designed concepts Uh, a girl or a boy moves from the most elementary uh, computational concept to the most complex one. So anyone can program. Did they learn to program? Yes, they have learned. So can anyone learn to program? Yes, absolutely. Everyone. It's a human uh, language. It has 1,000 syntactic rules and uh, the language, the human language, but this has dozens of uh, rules. Uh, So if you can acquire the syntaxes of human language, how come are you not going to be able to do that? Do they need to become bilingual from uh, an early onset? No, it's not necessary. Mathematics is something that is taught all around, but we cannot avoid 
the situation in which um, many of the children avoid or do not like maths. Maybe we're teaching too much or maybe we're not hitting the right key. We talk about some reference frameworks. We talk about the fact that we want uh, bilingualism and um, and we need to transform the system. But the truth is that what we have right now is not working either. So what we would need would be to introduce uh, some compulsory um, subject matters in primary and secondary um, to open the door so that they can learn to program. And then later on, they can delve into the internet. We don't need for the education system to tackle all the programming of the last line of code. For children to become encouraged to introduce themselves into this new language, which is the language of programming, in addition to learning that language and being capable of communicating with the machines, does it have some additional cognitive advantages? Yes, obviously. It is a creative task. It's about writing. It's about expressing one part of our knowledge and reasoning, which cannot be expressed in any other way because human language doesn't reach there and mathematical language doesn't reach that point. It's the computing programming language that allows you to have the blocks of construction to say this really strange relation that I'm representing in my head can be expressed in a piece of code. So go figure. There are many similar projects that want to help uh, children come closer to programming. What does Toolbox Academy offer? Which is the added value of Toolbox Academy? I have seen many, but from your standpoint, which are they? Well, on the one hand, um, it um, claims the the text-based teaching method. Uh, programmers do that with text. Why do we need to use blocks? It makes no sense and it can generate bad habits. You cannot make a mistake when writing with blocks because it either fits or doesn't fit. And we need to make mistakes. It's a trial and error also. So we claim that text-based approach. And then all the tool should be focused on um, the school centers where the children are going to be encouraged to program. That's very important. What we tried to achieve uh, since the beginning was uh, to try and hack the system in the good sense of the world, word of the of the word. Uh, yes, it's a good word, but we have perverted it. Um, we reporters, yes, precisely. We need to find original solutions to problems. So we tried to hack the system in the good sense of the world, uh, of the word. So if everything would fail, if the politicians would uh, not support us, if the teachers would not. Um, back us. Well, even so, children need to be capable of programming. And that was um, the approach. In Toolbox Academy, we want to bestow them with the tools so that even if you have the freakest idea, it can be represented there. And you can even generate um, school grade uh, bulletins uh, through that. Yeah, we need to do that. Yeah, we have been talking throughout the morning about the um, gender gap. We have um, girls and boys programming. One question would be the following. Are they the same? Is there someone who is better? And are there more boys or girls? Based on your experience with Toolbox, in our experience, it's 50-50, which is, uh, was the thing to be expected. And this was verified in an experiment that we did with the original Ministry of Education in the Andalusian government, and the performance was identic identical. Obviously, the fact that later on they do not want to study computing engineer later on is has a different ring to it. Previously, it was the IT faculty, just like the uh, faculty, but right now it's called computer sciences, and maybe girls conceive that as uh, having too much complexity, uh, too much fidgeting around, and maybe they're reluctant. But are there more girls or boys? Yesterday we were talking about that because we are part of the boomer generation, obviously, as you can see. And we were talking about um, Commodore and a spec Spectrum. And um, we went back in time and I did not, uh, Im you know, remember any girl uh, friend that I would have had that would have bought a Spectrum. We don't know whether society led us to that area and um, 
uh, girls to a, a different direction, but this has changed. Well, curiously enough, this changed in the 80s. After that, there was a trend. I remember being in the classroom, and at least 40% of uh, girls were there, but then it went down. I don't know which changes were introduced from a social standpoint, from an academic uh, standpoint, but then um, they lost interest, and there is a, a huge gap. I entered the um, the classroom, and there was barely a 10% rate of, uh, of, of girls, and this gender a gap introduces as salary gaps so by bridging that gap obviously all gaps need to be tackled but by bridging that gap it's really interesting because really well paid job offers are going to be made in the future and girls are not going to have access because they're not enrolling themselves in those degrees a question which i believe is important we have everything we have the toolbox academy we can go to the website we can learn to program there Maybe my school has decided to introduce this uh, system so that we can learn to program. When do we need to begin programming? When should we foster um, having children programming? Ideally, yesterday. Okay, yesterday. Yeah, it's urgent. It's basically really urgent. You perceive that as urgent. Yes, precisely, because it's absurd not to do that. It's so easy to define a basic uh, programming language. Let's not talk about um, drones, 3D printing, Legos. No, no nothing. Um, these basic computational structures um, are here. Learn to combine them and you will be combining because it's simple and economical. And you don't need a huge um, investment for that. Uh, you can do that in the Blackboard. You can do that um, in your own Spanish native language if you like. And secondly, because um, next generations are going to be tackling really huge challenges and they need to be granted access to all the available te technologies. So we're lagging behind. Yes, and they need to communicate to them to the machines. From what I gather from what you're saying, maybe all of this uh, block-based programming or everything that has to do with robotics is uh, um, concealing what we should be doing, like programming. Yes, absolutely. You are focusing on the interesting bit here. If you teach a group of kids, uh, uh, they show it. Uh, you show a robot to the kids, uh, avoiding the obstacles, etc. They think, "Wow, it's cool." But the important thing is the underlying logic that allows you to make the decision of generating this or that, or segmenting the image in order to detect an obstacle or an object. And this is hidden, so there is a deviation, just like with computational thinking. We are letting pedagogists. Um, deviate our attention because they say, oh, we have a competitional reasoning in another subject. No, but the interesting thing is to program, to tell a machine what they need to do. So I believe that there is too many distracting features. Yes, many things are distracting us from the goal of uh, programming um, uh, as a child and as of yesterday. Uncle, if you please, here you can see the toolbox dot yuma.esm sites. There's even um, a series uh, in the Andalusian uh, channel for children. So it's a project that is really well advanced, that has a lot of material, and which is fantastic. And uh, this is, uh, you're going to launch a crowdfunding for whom? How? N nine minutes. Well, mainly in order to raise awareness. Um, Yes, in order for people to understand that um, if you're talking about family milieu, the uh, business of, um, field and the school centers, we need to start mobilizing. We need to be aware of the fact that uh, there's a problem there and that we need to solve it. And if we can gather some amount so that from the um, city councils, from the ministries or companies, that um, if they can foster the fact that uh, the children of employees start programming, uh, well, it's all about hacking the situation. If uh, schools are not going to do that, um, we need to do it, do it in some other way. So please uh, look this project up. The majority of the crowdfunding is aimed at entities, but also users that want to participate in having the children start handling this language, which uh, 
according to Francisco, it is important to introduce it, and we should have introduced it as of yesterday. We're going to play a video here. So here goes my question to you. What is this? No, I know you know this. Uh, that would be tricky. Here's the right hand of Francisco, so he's no use. No, please tell me, what do you think it is? Music. From some series? What is this? It could be programming. What do you think this is? This has been done by artificial intelligence. What else? Hats, coats. That's what they suggest to you. Um, I uh, they suggested to me Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, but because you picked the same uh, work uh, that uh, TV3 picked, and when Alfred was asked, it was like, yeah, it's a really beautiful music with uh, some medieval resonance and he could not believe that the video, the music and the synthesis, all of that is 100% automatic. This is a project that you did on artificial intelligence and who has done this? A computer. A, a computer, but not bananas, right? No, a different machine. So it has been composed by artificial in intelligence and the synthesis, the sound, the post-production, and even the video has been done by artificial intelligence. The idea was to see how far we could uh, go without uh, human intervention. Yes, there's more videos. I have picked this one. I don't know that the Albert had picked it, which who has been in uh, Operación Triunfo, um, which is like a very important talent show in Spain. So as we can see, artificial intelligence can create many things and even generate music. So the headline uh, um, asked, the next Picasso is going to come from artificial intelligence, well, this is something that would not surprise me because the creative capacity of a computer, once we're capable of shaping up the creative process, is unlimited. This um, gave food for a lot of thought, um, and um, this disrupted things. Artificial intelligence is true that um, it's taken away some jobs, but there is a red line that says um, um, art is human, but here, um, there was a blurred line, so people's reaction was really interesting because some people said, well, where's the inspiration? Where is the need to create this urgency about death? Uh, computers do not know about this. But the question is that we had never placed ourselves in the mirror. What the computer showed it was that this was uh, uh, possible. Yes, death to a computer can't be like the blue screenshot of Windows. No, Windows is um, um, enjoying right now terminal cancer, I believe. Well, any other questions from there, please? Where is Jorge? Is there any robot microphone? I can do it myself. Let me do it. Is it this one? Or no? No, it doesn't work. It's the TX10. It's the bar. I think the link is wrong. Can you check it? Can 
Congratulations for this morning. My question is rather a comment. You said that you can't think of the world without the book, without a book. But uh, the book that jumped to my mind all the time is uh, Program Inequality, published by MIT Press, and uh, explains how the UK lost the battle for programming because it kicked out every woman working in the programming uh, services uh, during World War II. So the gender bias might not come from the fact that uh, women do not like programming. Maybe the market did not give them an opportunity, or maybe the linguist abilities were not included. And this is where linguistics and the rest of human studies jump in. Linguists are always uh, at the back, and I can speak about uh, my personal experience. I studied linguistics, and I'm a woman, but when I sit next to a programmer, I'm invisible. Regarding gender equality, there is not much more that can be done. There can be done a, a positive action. When a girl goes to the secretary of computing science, they can register as well. So they do have the same opportunities, but we can uh, motivate. Uh, the chapter is about a girl who is an astronaut, so they see that they can uh, also do it. I think the best model is themselves, seeing themselves programming. If they see themselves programming, they might start change their point of view. But today, we do have 100% equality. Everyone can join a computing engineering school. Hello. I liked your presentation. I'm an artist, among other things. And about the last thing you commented and you showed, a computer creating a piece of art with music or whatever. Here's my question. Is that, was that determined by a programmer? Or should it be, shouldn't it be an artist programming? Or how polluted would an artist be? to make the computers work free. I'm going to try and, re um, and, and answer your question. Artists get inspiration from nature. That's obvious. So we could say that they're not pure. They're taking models from nature. What we do, or what we did, was to model biological processes to have a creativity engine that's connected to the rules of composition, which is precisely what uh, children learn when they go to art school. And with that, they got a final piece of work. So there was no meddling with the creation process. We are not teaching you music. We are teaching you to create complex structures and to transcribe them into the music language. And uh, people said that was a composition uh, or a piece of art, uh, a piece of work like the one a human could do. And that's as far as we got. I'm not an artist myself, and I don't even know how to read a petition. So although there were advisors looking into that, I, I didn't get there at all. So to finish off, there's something that really caught my eye about Francisco. He's uh, chair of uh, AI. He's uh, passionate about technology. And I have a question for you, for the audience. What mobile phone do you think Francisco has with uh, and which uh, operating system? That's, that's pretty funny. He doesn't have any? Nokia? iPhone? the cheapest one in the market, and it costs zero euros. Which one would you recommend?
Just throw away with the one you have and don't get a new one. He doesn't have a mobile phone. That's amazing. And he has no mobile phone, even if he works so much with uh, technologies. I, I know what it is. I know I, I know it as a piece of technology, but I'm not, I'm not interested in it. Thank you, Francisco. <clears throat> Hola. Bueno, las mujeres necesitan. Women need benchmarks and silence. Otherwise, you can't listen. Francisco Vico. Teaching and pride, making knowledge free. There are new possible languages unreachable today yet. Children, decipher codes or it will be late to save the planet.